Isaiah, this is Isaiah 29. Um, this is talking about Israel, certainly in the original. Jesus quoted in Matthew 15, talking about them. So it, it applies in it applies in its original context in Israel. It applied in the first century context sure. with Jesus, and it has other applications. It, it says in verse 10, For the Lord has poured out upon you a spirit of deep sleep, and has closed your eyes and covered your heads. And the vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of the discerning men shall be hidden. All ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, who sees us, who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay, that the thing made should save its maker? He did not make me, or the thing formed. He has no understanding. Yeah. So let's pull some things out wow. here. Yeah, this good passage. For the Laodicean church, mm -hmm. the spirit of deep sleep. Is oh, it here? Man. Oh, it's, it's on us. And, and you think about deep sleep and you think about spiritual blindness and you're like, well, where does that come from? Well, I, as I mentioned to, to Gary Stearman on the broadcast uh, that I did with him, uh, if you look at 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter delineates how to grow. And he mm -hmm. said, add to your faith this. And, and he just says, add this. And basically the admonition is you got to keep growing. Okay. And then he makes... A positive, he says, if you do this, then you will have a, a great entrance, uh, rewards, basically. But then he gives a negative, and he says, if you do not do this, you will then go myopic mm -hmm. th to the point of blindness. And you're thinking, oh, wow, he's warning us that if we don't grow, if we don't understand the truth, if we don't get things that the Bible's trying to say, then we actually start going blind. And, and so blindness sometimes is even associated, obviously, to the unbelievers who blind. Yeah. And the God of this world blinds them, too. But then Peter is discussing this to believers. Or at least people who claim to be or believers, claim to believers, right? Believers, right? Mm -hmm. At least, yeah. and And saying, that's what's happening to you guys. And if you take that and you apply it to Laodicea, what does Jesus say? You're blind. Yeah. You can't see. I say, buy the salve from me yeah. and, because you can't see. And so the, 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 the church is not only asleep, it's going blind. Blind naked and, and, poor, and so, yeah. And you, 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 you take the admonition of what the, the Lord said, be alert, watch. It's the opposite of being alert and watching, asleep and being found naked. Now, the interesting thing, there was a parable to this uh, from the first century of where this idea comes a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. And it had to do with the high priest. The high priest was actually called the thief of the night. Well, what do you mean? Well, the priests were on duty during the night in the temple services. Anyway, what would happen is, uh, periodically, the high priest would show up in the middle of the night to see if these guys were still awake, on duty. Yeah, yep, surprise visit. Surprise visit. Yep. Inspection, and, he, <laughs> and, and the inspection came, and he was called the thief of the night. The high priest was. If he did find someone sleeping... Interesting enough, what he would do is take a torch and light their clothes on fire. And then once that priest figured out that his clothes <laughs> were on fire, he would strip himself of his clothes and run out stark naked out of the temple with the shame and the embarrassment that came with falling asleep. Hence, look at Revelation 16. Behold, I come as a thief. Yep. And it, to paraphrase it, do not let me catch you naked and ashamed, yeah. you, which is using that parable of the thief in the night. And so what is the idea? The church is asleep. The church is out. Well, he's going to light that thing on fire. Don't be caught naked. Don't be caught asleep. Watch, therefore, for you do not know. Yeah. And so, it, so the idea of sleeping and being awake is all centered around oh. that. That it's language, amazing how it works. Yeah, that language is so constant in in all of the parables, uh, certainly in the Olivet Discourse and others. Yeah. Um, this little section here, I have this underlined. This is Isaiah 29, 13. And it, it's the t tail end. Um, because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me. But here's, here's the phrase. And their fear of me 
is a commandment taught by men. When we think about um, their fear yeah. of me, you know, I fear God, especially based on understanding his, his, his laws, his commandments. But we look out there and we think, well, the person that is in some of these uh, lifestyles, yeah. uh, do they have any fear of God? Well, their fear of God is based on the commandment of the taught by men. So these human traditions. So you yes. look at them and you go, well, there's nothing wrong with my lifestyle. Well, where'd you get that from? Well, my pastor Bingo. or my seminary. So you don't have any fear of God in this? No, because my my leader, who my spiritual leader, told me that that's not what the Bible really says. Right. That's happening all over the place. And, and, and so that's a perfect passage of a demonstration of that. And, and it's like we said, the authority now has shifted from Jesus being the head of the church mm-hmm. to some some guy that approves of you being uh, saying that you're a girl when you're a boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, because my pastor said it. So that's where this attack on God's authority has come from. It was happening then, happened in Jesus' day, and it's happening in the mm-hmm. last days. And and really, Mondo, if you, you boil everything down, it all comes back to authority. It does, yeah. By what authority do you do these yep. things? They kept asking Jesus, right? And and if you don't accept the Bible's authority, you're gonna look at someone else's authority. Well, and, I, and let's let's clarify. The Bible's authority as properly translated. As properly translated, because yeah. Because most of them will go, well, I believe the Bible, I believe <laughs> right. the Bible. And you go, and we have a whole section, that we had a whole section on our church website where I just said, hey, for those who are trying to help others that are in the confused gender, uh, you know, what, whatever st- lifestyle that they're confused about. And so we had several articles talking about some of the original uh, Greek, Romans 1 and other passages, 1 Corinthians 6, saying, do not let anybody persuade you. I don't care how many letters they have behind their name and, and allow them to redefine this. Yeah. Because it is crystal clear. If you look at some of the the, the best lexicons, it is crystal clear what the language means. There's it no is. reason to be confused. And, you know, and I tell people, you know, the, the Greek uh, many times is written on a third and fourth grade level in the original language. Yeah. And so why did God do that? To make it plain to, to us and plain. obvious to us. And you're right. They'll take passages Passages, uh, First Corinthians or whatever six, and say, well, that that homosexuality was tied to prostitution, yep, male and, prostitution, and, and boys, it, you know. yeah, and so no, that's not what's happening between two men that are monogamous and in yep. love. Yep. And you're like, really, you're going there. You're gonna you're gonna take that passage out of the context, yep. out of the historical understanding, and make it bend to whatever you want yeah. it. And that's what they're doing. That's the fear. That's the 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 fear of God says the fear of me is a commandment taught by men. Well, yeah, hey, bingo. we've had a great time today. Yeah, it's good. I encourage you know people if they haven't heard your uh, your your message to get the, v- the DVDs or the videos of the yeah, conference because absolutely. you talk about you gave a whole presentation on Laodicea. Where can people find out about your ministry again? Uh, just go to rockharborchurch.net and everything's laid out there. All the resources, all the videos, podcasts, everything is on our website. Yep. Hey everybody, thanks for listening today. Again, as always, we ask for your prayer Amen. for your ministry, our yes. ministry here, all the ministries of those that are trying to get the word out. Because we, we, there's nothing greater apart from the gospel than requesting of you to to give us your prayer.